Hello and welcome to Elvenley Railways. Welcome to Spring 2024. I've been doing quite a lot of work in this area, as uh, regular viewers can probably tell and also the other end of the line as well this is how it used to look and believe it or not that little bit of earth there that I left after digging out the uh, various lines took about 25 buckets of soil to remove and there it is gone and there's Keith came for a visit just showing him went for a ride up the line that morning we got to the end and uh, found that the buffer stop had been demolished by some vehicle or other Getting hit by things. What are we doing? What are we doing, mate? <laughs> We're going backwards. We're going backwards. So the buffer the buffer stop was uh, demolished by some vehicle. I think it was the end steam engine. It wasn't me. So we're going to go and get the other coach to make sure that we can that we're in clear, and I'll reposition it. We've got to make sure we can get two coaches in the head shunt, basically. Quality shunting going on here. All those years on the railways, uh, learnt lots of stuff. Sitting down, being one of them, and waving his hand. Keep your hands in, please. Keith was uh, running errands for me there, he went to get a bucket for me. So I had to clear away quite a lot of uh, soil and debris. In the end I was able to clear out a little bit more line and uh, so the buffer stop uh, is a little bit further back now, making it a bit more comfortable to fit the engine and two coaches in. They have to clear the point because it's a spring point, otherwise you end up with things going different ways, <laughs> which isn't good. So all the points seem to be working pretty well now, which is good. <laughs> There's quite a few points on the railway, so they all need to work properly as well. Got Di here again. <laughs> Just fixed the buffer stop at the end, so all is well. Di mysteriously vanished. few scenes with the uh, setting sun. It's a good time to get the railway looking nice because uh, if it looks good at this time of year then when things uh, get in full bloom it should look really nice. This roof had uh, suffered a lot so I, I removed the first layer of the ply and uh, put some roofing felt on top. Treated the railway to uh, a new lamp, new solar lamp. 
had to do quite a lot of track work, a lot of levelling and um, some maintenance and someone had forgotten to put uh, put a screw in that sleeper somehow. Look back on a video from a year ago and uh, it did look as if I hadn't done that much on the railway, no more track laying or anything like that but uh, then I made myself a little list of all the bits and pieces that I have done and uh, it is pretty extensive. So I don't feel too bad about it. Whenever the weather allows I'm, I'm out there doing stuff. And I do have a few plans up my sleeve. Stomach rumbling, I don't know if you can hear that, hopefully not. It shouldn't be, I've just had uh, jam and peanut butter on toast. Use a bit of old uh, engine oil there to uh, put some protection onto the bogies. They've been sat in the tunnel all, all winter and uh, it's very damp and uh, horrible in there really. This is on the red coach, you can't really tell from this uh, shot. And there's a typical work train there full of uh, cement. The edge of that platform needed some work, so uh, I chipped away some of the uh, slate and I started uh, to put new new pieces of slate on top. Now you can see the finished job looking much better. And in the last episode, you saw the uh, the repainted shelter, and uh, it all comes together nicely. I started working on some slate here, some uh, crazy slate paving. Crazy slating, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it looks much better and uh, you get a lot less dirt washing up onto the track, which is always a good thing. And uh, it just makes it a bit more permanent, really. I gave the bench a bit of a coat of paint, which is... Uh, already started coming back off again so I need to give it another coat and we'll give it a rub down first I also did the edge of the little platform there as well uh, with slates but um, that area is starting to shape up it looks a bit better there's a little step as well that I've made there and uh, you just got to hope nothing strikes it on the way down the hill or up the hill there's my work train again and the points have had quite a lot of work done on them because they're spring points they need quite a bit of uh, maintenance but uh, they're doing pretty well that's uh, as far as I've got with that now so I'm not sure how far to take it but, uh, we shall see I've got plenty of cement and sand this area here needs a bit of development so I've got, got plans for that All the bits which I've dug out have um, mossed up nicely and they're getting better and better as time goes on. I 
my priority isn't to extend the line, which is, it would be very difficult, but uh, to to make it as nice as possible, to have as many nice little features along the way, and uh, keep it interesting. I think um, the length of the line isn't so important. Uh, it's enough for me to maintain anyway, but uh, having interesting bits and pieces along the line sort of makes it really. is about 80 meters long and you can have a continuous run of uh, twice that much if you uh, if you go around the balloon loop and back again so I laid some concrete in the shed for Elizabeth finally laid that and uh, also for its tender as well so hopefully keep the mice out you never know it's very, very bad in the tunnel. It's really, there's a lot of water underneath there and it just comes up as squishy, horrible mud. I needed to do something about this. Some form of drainage was needed, so I needed to devise a, a culvert operation. I'm so sorry. You get to a certain age and you have to tell dad jokes and you can't even help yourself. So there you can see I've dug a furrow. Well, a little bit of a diversion there with the Gwilly, Gwilly Railway doing something. You can see I've got such a problem with the, the water draining down into the tunnel here. But it does make for a very nice mossy wall, which is uh, which is lovely. But uh, yeah, it, it was all just gathering. I, I thought covering it with concrete might help it just to drain out, but uh, the, the underneath of the track needed proper drainage. So I've dug this furrow, as you can see. It passes underneath all the tracks. And then just drains out onto the bank. If we've had really heavy rain, it, it just flows all day like that, believe it or not. Because it's all coming down from the bank, which is... Uh, it's, it goes quite a way, the bank up there. It's surprising. Some more gwilly footage. I get distracted by that. Gives me a break from doing a bit of work now. So you see that third coach, that Mark One, is looking beautiful the way they've painted that up. In fact, they all look good. So uh, yeah, you can see uh, <laughs> you see how much water comes down. This is obviously the other end of the railway, and uh, I get a lot of people asking why, why I can't extend the railway this way. But hopefully, these shots make it obvious why it can't be done. Um, yeah, this is the end, and that's it. There's no way you can go any further here. Slate Bridge. It's the first over bridge. Well, it's the first bridge that takes the railway over anything on this seven and a quarter inch version of the Ivy Railway. Um, so it is a first, even though it's a tiny bridge. There, I've made up uh, the bridge for the uh, the line for Elizabeth's shed, just out of a bit of slate. 
later in the day and it was still flowing. Made this, this is where the slate was, and I've just built it up with a bit of uh, little bits of slate. You can see it, I didn't realize at the time, but you can see it all move as the train goes over, but I don't think it's going to cause any problems. It's pretty stable. And the track always moves when trains go over it anyway. Like it does on the big railways. There's a view of the uh, the new platform edge, coming over the uh, the new little bridge as well. I moved the sign just under the, the lamp and uh, took up a few of the primroses from uh, from the bank, under primrose bank, of which there's uh, many, and uh, put them in pots. This doesn't flow all the time like this, but uh, it does once it's rained, you get it flowing and um, it's quite useful for uh, when I'm doing stuff with Elizabeth as well to train things out or anything with the hose pipe a little bit more of um, the concrete on the top of that and I've also put some more coming from Elizabeth's shed something you rarely see is anything going this way into the tunnel I just wanted to check there was enough clearance for the flanges before everything's set
first time this year that I'd sat on my little throne. The whole area seems to be standing up quite nicely. That was something that I actually did um, within the last year and uh, built the other one as well at uh, Orchard Wall. Could do with someone to put my, put my legs up there but uh, when I've got the engine there I can use that. So. I don't think you'd get to sleep there. Forget that. Pull your trousers up, Harkley. Get on with some work. So that is exactly what it looks like now, but uh, today's a bit wetter. When I did my short film, the last video I uploaded, I did a lot of footage from this angle. Keith was driving. It's easy to remove the, the cover from above the bogies on one of the green coaches, and uh, you get a good view of the bogies. Quite a few videos of this for the uh, for the last film that I did. But it's a unique way to see the railway. Few more little clips coming up. Just bits and pieces that I filmed for the short film, but uh, yeah, I didn't use all of them. enjoyed the video and um, if you like me you, you won't be uh, sad to see the, uh, the end of the winter. The winter's nice but it uh, be good for things to start warming up a little bit and hopefully being a little bit drier you never know you can always hope. <laughs>